what are some other uh, so <laughs> the caveat of, of everything we just talked about with uh, the definition of food I want to talk about non-food obesogens. You mentioned some earlier. What are one, two big examples, things that are all over the place that people are using commonly? And what do we know about the, the mechanisms here? Well, there are a lot. There are a lot of obesogens. There are a lot of mechanisms. Bottom line is um, they're, all, they're all around us. And to, for the most part, we put them there. Uh, they're, they're all, for the most part, part of our... Uh, Anthropocene. They're part of, you know, the man-made environment that we have uh, created for ourselves. Um, they can act through multiple different pathways. There are multiple receptors in the body that can transduce these obesogen signals, but they're all basically receptor-mediated signals. So it can be the estrogen receptor, it can be the androgen receptor, it can be the glucocorticoid receptor, it can be the aryl hydrocarbon receptor, it can be LA, LXR or FXR in the uh, in the liver, okay, it can be the PPR gamma receptor. Uh, there are a bunch of different uh, compounds and there are a bunch of different receptors. All of those receptors that I just listed off are part of the evolutionary process of a fat cell. They will create Oh, I've got thyroid hormone receptor. That's in there too. Um, they will create adiposity when stimulated. And so different obesogens will stimulate different receptors. So the aryl hydrocarbon receptor, grilling your food will activate the aryl hydrocarbon receptor. So remember I said I love barbecue? Well, you want to get rid of that? You might have to get rid of the barbecue. Well, that's a problem. What, um, what is it about the barbecue? Is it is it the like the charred? The charred. Yeah. The charred part. Yes. So I don't know how to make barbecue without charring. <laughs> it's part of the part of the process, unfortunately. That's one of the reasons why everybody says eat raw too. And you know, number one, the fiber is still there and you haven't created any of these dietary advanced glycation end products. That's another thing that, you know, it drives this phenomenon. So um, the glycation that we talked about before the Maillard reaction, it can occur in the body or can occur in the, um, in the can before you even eat it. If it occurs in the body, it generates the reactive oxygen species directly. If it occurs in the can before you eat it, then what happens is that dietary advanced glycation end product will bind to a receptor for advanced glycation end products on your cells called RAGE, R-A-G-E, receptor for advanced glycation end products, and activate the NADPH oxidase generating reactive oxygen species also. So it's, you know, they're, they're everywhere, including in the canned or, you know, uh, packaged foods to start with that, you know, if they, if the food's been heated before you got it, there's a good chance there are dietary AGEs in the food before you even put it in your mouth. Um, air pollution, as I mentioned, is an inflammatory reactant, which has been shown to increase adiposity. Um, and that has nothing to do with calories. I mean, it has to do with the air. 